All right, so today we're going to learn a little bit, or not learn, but just review on how to use the spectrophotometer to determine the concentration of an unknown, okay? So I have an unknown concentration solution of copper sulfate here, but I don't know its concentration. So I'm going to try to determine the concentration of this copper sulfate unknown, all right? To do that, I can use a spectrophotometer because the spectrophotometer will be able to identify the color, the how much color there is based on the concentration, or in other words, how much light is absorbed by the chemical that's in the solution, and that's going to be related to the concentration. The first thing I need to do, though, is make myself a stock solution of copper sulfate that I know the concentration of, and then find out how much light that stock solution Okay, so I'm going to start off by making a 50 millimolar, which is 0 0.05 moles per liter, or 0 0.05 molar, solution of copper sulfate. All right, so. I want um, 0 0.05 moles per liter. That's what I said, a 50 millimolar or 0 0.05 moles per liter. Solution. So I need 0 0.05 moles of copper sulfate. Correct. Um, I know that for every one mole of copper sulfate, I need this many grams. 249.68 grams. So this is my copper sulfate pentahydrate, all right? This is my copper sulfate pentahydrate, but my mass, 249.68, will be the same if I want one mole of copper sulfate because delivering one mole of copper sulfur pentahydrate will give me one mole of copper sulfate. So 249.68. So one mole of my copper sulfate will be retrieved by delivering 249.68 from the copper sulfate pentahydrate, okay? So there's one mole of copper sulfate and one mole of copper sulfate pentahydrate, so there's that many grams. All right. If I have moles for every liter, zero five, because that is what my volumetric flask is going to hold. So I'm going to make a solution. So I want 0 0.05 liters. This is how many grams I need for every uh, mole of the stuff, and this is how many moles of the copper sulfate I want for every liter. So if I multiply this out, this is going to tell me liters cancel out, moles cancel out here, and I'm going to be left in grams. So this is going to tell me how many grams of copper sulfate I need to weigh out. Okay? So I will do that on the, my calculator here. Zero 0.05 times 249.68 times 0 0.05. So it's 0 0.6242. Double check that one more time. 0.6242. Grams. All right. So, 0.6242 grams. I need to tear my balance. All right, so it's 0 0.639 grams. All right, now I'm going to deliver it into a 
my 50 milliliter volumetric flask. Whoops, almost lost. All right. So I fill it up to the meniscus. There we go. Now, I want to make sure that everything is dissolved completely. While this is dissolving, I will get my pipettes ready. Okay, so this is my known solution. I know this is the concentration of this one. It is 0 0.05 molar copper sulfate. All right, so there's my 0 0.5 molar copper sulfate. This is my unknown over here, and I'm trying to determine how much copper sulfate is in that solution. Okay, I knew for, uh, previously that my wavelength of interest is around 810. If we didn't know that, then we could put a sample of this in there and scan the different wavelengths to find where the maximum absorbance value is. But I know that this is, uh, absorbs uh, wavelength of light that's 810 nanometers. So I can set this to 810. Let me see how this happens. 810. All right. And again, it could be 800, it could be 805, something in there. Now, I get a cuvette out. My cuvette is going to first contain water so I can blank my spectrophotometer at that value. So there I have my blank. All right, so it's blanked at 810 nanometers. Now I'm going to make, I'm going to get out, I'll get out five volumes here, so five cuvettes so that I can have a, make a standard curve. So I make five new concentrations from this stock solution, all right? My stock solution is 0.5 molar, or 0 0.05 molar, sorry, 0 0.05 molar. And I'm going to make up one milliliter of various concentrations from this 0 0.05 molar, all right? Um, First of all, I'll take some of this 0 0.05 molar and put it in the spectrophotometer and see if the absorbance reading is below 1.3. Make sure I have no smudges on the windows. Make sure that it goes in this direction. Not this direction, but it goes in this direction. It doesn't matter if I have it completely turned around like that, but it has to go that direction. All right, so. Um, I see the absorbance value there is 0.577, right? 0.577, that's the absorbance of 0.5 molar, okay? So I can make my chart, start making a chart here. Concentration of copper sulfate versus absorbance, right? 0 0.05 molar, um, what was it? 5.577. All right. So there's my copper sulfate. Um, now, if I make a new solution, I'm going to take 0.8 milliliters, 800 microliters and put it into this cuvette, and that'll end up being 80% solution, 80% uh, of the 0 0.05 molar solution. We can now change this to 0 0.6 milliliters and make up. Let's put some of this into here. This one here will end up being 
or 60% of the solution. We go down to 0.4, okay? And then we make a solution here. This one will be our, our 0.4. Then we go down to 0.2. And this last one here will be 0.2. Okay, now I change my tip. This pan here will be my water. I'm at my 0.2, so I'll add my 0.2. This is my 20. 40, 60, 80, and my 100%. So I have my 0.2 to my 80%. Fill it up to one milliliter. And then I, uh, for my 60%, I need to add 0.4 milliliters of water. So I just did my 80%, now I'm doing my 60%. Um, to my 40%, I need to add 0.6 milliliters of water. And to my 20%, I need to add 0.8 milliliters of water. Okay. Now I can take this, this is my 20%, I gotta give it a good mix, right? I have to be sure it was well mixed. So I do that, and now this is only 20%, so it's not gonna influence the concentration of this one very much, so I can, it'd be best to change tips every time, but it's kind of wasteful, so, and I can see that I'm not getting crossover too much. All right, so here's my 20, 40, 60%, here's my 80%, My 100% is already well mixed. All right, I'll write down my values here. My 100% I already did. My 80%, I don't have to blank it, it's the same wavelength. I do want to look and make sure that there's nothing, no bubbles in the way of my window there. 80% is 0.466. My 60%, 0.364. My 40%, 0.241. And my 20%, 0.119. Okay. While I'm here, I can also check the concentration of my unknown sample. All right, I have my unknown sample here. Check the absorbance of my unknown sample. And it says 0 0.480, 0 0.480. So I'll write down my unknown value as well. Okay. So we go over to the board. I could have a third column to help me remember the relative percent. This is 100% of my unknown, or my, my known value. So this is the relative concentration, concentration relative to my stock. And again, my stock was 0 0.051. So I had an 80%, a 60%, a 40%, a 20%, and that's it. I also did a zero, right? That was my blank, and I know that my zero had a value of zero. That's because I blanked it to zero. So my zero had a value of zero. My 80% was 0.466. My 60% was 0.364. My 40% was 0.241. And my 20% was 0.119. All right, the concentrations of those. Well, 
Um, 20% of this, right, is 0 0.00, 0 no, 0 0.01, sorry, 0 0.010, 0 0.010, all right? 20% of this value here, 10% would be 0 0.005, 20% is 0 0.010, all right? So 40% is 0 0.020. Right? 60% must be 40 plus 20%, which is 0 0.030. 80% must be 0 0.040. All right? So those are my concentrations. Okay? Does everybody follow how I did that? If you don't know how that was done, you can just take this value, 0 0.05, and take 80% of it by multiplying it by 0 0.8. That will give you the concentration. All right? So those are my concentrations. All right. So I have these values here that I uh, determined their absorption for. I have their concentrations. Obviously, this one here is a concentration of zero. All right? So now I can plot these in Excel and get the relationship between the absorbance and the concentration. So my concentrations were 0 0.05, 0 0.04, 0 0.03, 0 0.02, 0 0.01 and zero. These were my concentrations of my um, <coughs> copper sulfate in molarity, the molarity, molar concentrations. All right, this concentrate, this is my absorption values that I got. I got values of 0 0.577, 0 0.466, 0 0.364, 0 0.241, 0 0.119, and then this was my blank, my blank to zero. All right. Now I highlight these here. I insert a scatter plot. All right. While it's here, I can click this so that I can easily change these axes. This axis here is my um, concentration. So it's the uh, I can put square brackets. Um, all right, so we have our copper sulfate concentration on our x-axis, our absorbance at 810 nanometers on our y-axis. And we see that there seems to be a very linear relationship as um, absorption equaling concentration times the path length times epsilon which is our extinction coefficient. So this is Beer's law, right? All right, so the absorption versus the concentration. All right, now um, I'm going to want to add a trend line here. I add a trend line. It's going to be a linear trend line because I expect a linear relationship, and I want to display the equation on the chart as well. So here's my equation. This relates absorption to concentration. Again. My absorption is on my y-axis. So now I had an unknown. And the unknown absorption was 0 0.480. All right? That's my unknown absorption. So if I put that value into this equation for y, in other words, I take this value, which is my y value, I subtract. 0 0.0053 and then the answer to that I divided by I divide by the slope 11.569 correct and so then that should tell me that I do something wrong there 10.569.0043. Oh, my absorbance wasn't 0.048, it was 0 0.048. Okay, so it's not 0.048, it's 0 0.048. There we go. So it tells me that the concentration, and this is um, molar, that the concentration of my unknown is 41 millimolar, 
which makes sense, right? Because I saw that the absorbance was between 50 and 40 millimolar. So the absorbance is, is and, and this value gives me the value of 41 millimolar. All right. Good. So now I've determined the concentration of that unknown. It's 41 millimolar. All right. So that is the process to determine concentrations of unknowns. Now, if I had a different concentration of a copper sulfate unknown, I can use this plot here and just go put it into the, the spectrophotometer, determine the absorbance at 810 nanometers, and I would be able to determine its concentration right away. All right? So that's how you determine the concentration of an unknown using a spectrophotometer with a standard curve. Okay? All right, so I'm going to show you kind of a cool uh, titration that I like. All right, here we have um, water. I just got this from there. So the first thing I want to do when I'm preparing my burette, obviously, is remove the cork and remove the storage water that's in there. Um, then I'm going to want to rinse it with my solution, uh, my titrate, whatever it's going to be. This here is a sodium hydroxide solution. Okay, and I'm going to make a solution of sodium hydroxide here. This is 0.5 molar, so I'm going to use 20 milliliters of this and dilute it up to 100 milliliters. Again, I'm using a graduated cylinder, so I'm not very precise. I'm just kind of performing a titration to give you a general example of how the titrations are supposed to be performed, the kinds of things you want to be aware of, right? So I need to um, mix this solution here. So I'm going to take some parafilm. All right, so I'm mixing the solution there. So now this is 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide solution. 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide solution, and that's going to be my titrant, what I put into my burette. Okay, so I want to make sure my stopcock is closed, and I'm going to rinse my burette three or four times. down the sides of the beer beaker the be beaker to make sure that any of that copper sulfate solution got rinsed down I also want to fill up the beaker just above the stir bar okay all 
All right, now I can make sure my stir plate works. I turn on the stir plate, not the heating plate, the heating portion. And I'll have an indicator here. My indicator will be uh, phenolphthalein. Phenolphthalein turns purple when solutions are basic and turns colorless when solutions are not basic, right? Or neutral. So this solution here, we would expect to see no color because it is a neutral solution. Whereas this solution up here is our basic solution. So it will make the solution turn pink. I'm going to add a little bit more water there. Okay. Have a little bit more stirring action as well. Have my I can identify my initial volume there, and then I begin to deliver it. You see that as it's delivered, it turns pink. But what happens is the copper ion in this solution combines with the hydroxide ion in this solution to form copper hydroxide. And copper hydroxide is a precipitate. So it will not... The copper hydroxide is a precipitate, therefore it will not um, stay pink. So I, as I deliver more of my copper sulfate, this needs to go a little bit faster. So now the reaction is done and you can see there's the pink color but then there's also kind of a haze in there, a hazy color and that's the copper hydroxide that is precipitated out and is floating around and if I let it settle, it would settle down towards the bottom, right? So in this reaction here, let's see, is there a little bit more to go? Uh, it's about there. So in this reaction here, I took a known solution of sodium hydroxide, an unknown solution of copper sulfate and I could do the calculations to determine how much copper sulfate was in here based on the titration change color. Because as soon as the color changes, it looks like I can have one more drop. As soon as the color changes, that means that all of the, the um, copper is consumed and now the sodium hydroxide is just making the dye turn color. So I know that the moles of sodium hydroxide that were necessary is stoichiometrically related to the moles of copper here. All right, so that's an example of how to use the titration equipment with a slightly different method of titration. All right.